In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own Chrome extension, and this is what it's going to look like. So it's called URL Vault. Here you're going to have a few URLs. You can remove them or you can add them. So I'm going to name it Extensions Page and press on Enter. And when I press on it, we can see that it's going to open this page. We can always remove it and it works on any page. So if I want to save Bootstrap and I don't want to name it, I can just press on Add. We can see that the name is very long, which is why we added this input. And when I press on it, it's going to open Bootstrap, so you can always remove it, add your own name, press on Enter, and we can see that it works. So it's a very handy Chrome extension, and before we get started, make sure to like this video, subscribe so you don't miss upcoming lessons. Comment down below if you have any questions or any errors through the video. But now, let's get started. Now let's not waste any time. First thing I started by doing is copying the URL for my Chrome extensions template, which I made for my Chrome extensions crash course. And what I'm going to do now is clone that GitHub repository into my desktop. Once it's done, what I did was rename it to URL vault. And then I CD to that folder and then I opened it with VS Code. And so if you haven't watched my Chrome extensions crash course, I'm going to go over all these files real quick. And so the most important file here is going to be the manifest.json file. Here we're going to have all the information about the Chrome extension. Here we're going to have the name of it. So I'm going to change it to URL vault. We have the version of the Chrome extension. The description is going to be the description of your Chrome extension. I'm going to keep it at extension description for now. Permissions is going to be permissions that we're going to have. Now, these are going to be the most important ones, and I'm going to be using tabs in this video. Content scripts is going to be where all of our files are. The background here is going to be pretty much like the back end of our website. And then in actions, we're going to have our default title and default pop up. So default pop up is going to be the HTML file of the Chrome extension. And the title is going to be the title of it. So I'm just going to rename that to URL Vault. Next thing I did was go to the popup.html and then paste in the Bootstrap link. You can go ahead and open bootstrap.com and then just copy the CSS link. We don't need the JavaScript link because we're not going to be using it. And now let's work on the body. So I'm going to delete everything here and then make a div called content. Inside of here, we're going to have a paragraph and the text is going to be URL Vault. The classes are going to be font size 3 font weight bold, text center, margin bottom one, and then text primary for the color. Under the paragraph, I'm going to make a div with classes of URL list, list group, padding two, and then padding top of zero. And inside of here, we're going to have all of our links. And now let's go ahead and actually style one. So the div with classes of URL, list group item, and then list group item action. Inside of this div, we're going to have a link, and the classes are going to be text decoration none and text dark, and width 100. After that, we're going to have the href. I'm going to set it to blank for now, and then we have the text. So I'm just going to write URL. Under the URL list div, we're going to have another div, which is going to be where our button and the input is. So let's make that div. The classes are going to be add container, input group, and then margin bottom three. We're going to have our input in here with class of form control, placeholder of website name, dot dot dot, area label, we can just skip that at URL, ID is going to be URL input, and under the input we're going to have our button, the type is going to be text, the class is going to be btn, btn primary, and then the ID is going to be add btn, and the text is going to be add, or you could just write the plus sign. Now to see what this looks like, we're going to go back to Chrome, press on the three dots over here, go to extensions and manage extensions. And here we're going to press on load unpacked. And here we're going to select the path of the folder. In my case, it's going to be in my desktop. And then the name is going to be URL vault. There it is. So now there it is. And when we click it, this is what it's going to look like. Now we, we still need to add our own style. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to VS Code, go to popup.css. I'm going to actually add padding zero in here. And then for the body, we're going to set the max height to actually be to 50 pixels. Now under that, we're going to select our URL list, which is going to be this div over here. And we're going to start by setting the max height to 165 pixels the overflow Y to be auto so that if we have too many elements, our scroll bar is going to appear. Now we're going to select each of our URLs here. So it's going to be this guy over here. And we're going to start by setting the display property to grid. And I'm going to use the important here because we need to override the default one, which is I'm pretty sure relative. Now we're going to set the grid template columns to be 90% and then 10%. And I'm going to show you why later on. 
under the URL, we're going to select our add button and then the add input. And then we're going to set the bottom border radiuses to be zero, because if we go back, we can see that it shouldn't look like this. So to fix that, we're going to write border bottom left radius zero. And so we also have to set the border bottom right radius to be zero. Now, if we go back and press on update over here, we can see that now it looks much better. And these are going to be the styles for now. We're going to add some more later on. And if we go to inspect here, I'm going to show you why we needed that 1920. So I'm going to move that down. Now we can see that we have a link here, but we're also going to need the icon to remove it. So that's where the 10% comes in. Now let's go ahead and actually add that trash can. So let's go ahead and open bootstrap, go to icons and then scroll to the very bottom right over here, go to CDN. And we're going to copy this link over here. Now we're going to go back to our popup.html and paste it under this link. And once we've done that, we're going to scroll to the very top. And in here, we're going to search up trash. And you can choose whichever one you want to, but I'm going to choose this trash without the fill. And I'm going to copy this element over here. So I'm going to press on copy, go back, go down to our link here. And then under it, I'm going to paste in our icon. Now let's go back to our extensions. I'm going to press on update and there it is. So now we actually need to style it a bit. And to do that, we're going to go back to our HTML. And the first thing that we're going to do is set the text to be danger which is going to change the color to red. Now we need to add an on hover effect. So let's go back to our URL and then we're going to write dot bi and then on hover, we can set the cursor to be pointer and then you can change the color to whatever you want to, but I'm just going to change it to black. And we also need to write important so that it would override our text danger over here. Go back here. We can see that it's red. And then when we hover it, we're going to have our cursor and the color is going to change to black. Now, another thing I want to do is style the scroll bar. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this multiple times. So let's just do it. Honestly, don't know how many that was, but let's press on update. And when we press it, we're going to see the scroll bar. And so that's what the overflow Y auto did. Now we have a scroll bar and we need to style it because it doesn't look as good as it should be. So I'm going to go to Chrome, search up modern scroll bar CSS, press on the first link, which is going to be dev community. This is where I usually copy my scroll bar and it's going to be this one over here. So go to CSS and then we're going to copy all of this. I'm going to close the page now, go back to VS code, go to the very bottom, paste it. And then we want this to be in our URL list. So we're going to copy this class and then I'm going to use a shortcut. So you're going to want to go here and then hold alt and then select all of these guys over here. And then I'm just going to paste the URL list. Now let's space these out and I'm going to change the width to 18 pixels and then everything else can stay. But if you want to, you can always change the colors. So there it is. Now, what we could also do is when we actually hover it, we can change the color, go back to the S code and on hover, we're just going to paste in this color. And now when we update, when we hover, it's going to change to our blue color here. And since we did that, what I'm going to do is set this guy to be the same color and change it to be a lot lighter. So somewhere over here. And then when we update, it's going to be a light blue. And when we hover, it's going to be our dark blue, but you can always change that. Now that we're done styling everything, I'm going to close my popup.css and open the popup.js file. And here we're going to start by initializing our variables. So the first variable that we're going to need is going to be the button. So I'm going to create a variable called add btn. And that's going to be document.gallman by ID and it's going to be add button. Next one is going to be the URL input. And then our last one is going to be the URL list. And then the last one is going to be the URL list. So list element and that's going to be document.gallman by ID URL list. Now let's go ahead and add an event listener to the button. So add btn dot add event listener on click. We're going to run a callback function and for now, Let's just console log add button click. And another thing I want to do is add an event listener to the input. So we're going to write URL input dot add event listener. And this event listener is going to be on key press. We're going to run a callback function. And then here we actually need to get the event. So if event dot key equals to enter, then we're going to press our button. So add btn dot click. Now I'm going to actually copy it, remove all this unnecessary stuff here and then paste it. And so now if we go back here, update it, I'm going to press on the button once, go here and press on enter. And now if we open this 
we should see two console log. So you can see that both of our event listeners worked. Now, next thing to do is we have to get the URL of the website that we're currently on. And if you thought of using uh, windows.location or something similar to that, it's not going to work because the location is going to be this Chrome extension. So we have to use one of the permissions that we asked for, which was tabs. So now we have to actually go back to our VS code and here is where we're going to actually use it. So we know that this works right now. So we're going to have to write chrome.tabs, which was the permission dot query. And then we're going to use these brackets inside and write active true. And then we're also going to write create window true. And then we're going to have to run a callback function. And here we're going to get tabs tabs. And so inside let's actually console log tabs here. We're going to get the tab that we're currently on dot URL and then also the title. So let's go down here and then here we're going to change that to title. Let's go back here, update, and I'm going to go back to bootstrap here. I'm going to press on add and let's inspect this and see if it worked. So we have our trash bootstrap icons and we can see that that's the actual title and we have the link. So if we press it, it's going to open the same page, which means that it worked. Next thing to do is to put this inside of an object. So I'm going to write const URL. It's going to be an object where the URL is going to be tabs zero dot URL. And then the title is going to be tabs dot title. Now we can delete all of our console logs and let's save this to our local storage. So let's write local storage dot set item URLs. And you can name that whatever you want to, but make sure you remember it. And then we're going to use JSON to stringify an array, which we haven't created yet. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go here and I'm going to write const URL list. And for now, we're just going to set that to an empty array. And under the URL, we're actually going to push our URL into the URL list. So URL list dot push URL. And I'm going to actually space this out a bit. So here, now we can put our URL list inside just like that. And now we actually need to check if we have anything in our local storage so that we could set our URL list to be equal to. And to do that, I'm actually going to make another variable. So const save URLs. And that's going to be this. But I'm actually going to turn this into a function. So Let's go down here. I'm going to write a function get saved URLs because I want this to be neat. And here we're going to write in this statement. So if local storage dot get item URLs, then we're going to return JSON dot parse local storage dot get item URLs. And so if we don't have an item called URLs, then we're just going to return an empty array. And so here we're going to set our saved URLs to be equal to this function. So we're going to paste this in here. And now we're going to set our URL list to equal to saved URLs. Now let's go ahead and make a render function. So at the very bottom, I'm going to create a function called render URL list. And here the first thing that we're going to do is select our URL list element and set the inner HTML to be blank. So that if we have any elements there, it's going to clear them out. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to need to run a for each function for our URL list. So URL list dot for each URL, or actually since it's going to be an object, what we're going to do is select our properties like this. So we're going to use the curly bracket, select our URL and title. And here we're going to create our elements. So const URL element, that's going to equal to document dot create element. And we're going to create a div. Next thing that we need to do is we're going to have to add our classes. So class list dot add and our classes are going to be right over here. So let's go ahead and copy them, go back here, paste them. And what we need to do is add comma between each class because that's how this works. So let's go ahead and do that. You can try not doing it and you're going to get an error, but this is what this is going to look like. And then next thing, I'm going to treat this like react because instead of creating another two elements, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write URL element dot enter HTML. And so here we're pretty much just going to write basic HTML. So I'm going to create our link over here. Here we're going to write classes. So I'm going to go ahead and copy them and paste them right over here. Now the href is going to be equal to the URL. So to do that, we're going to have to use the syntax and then we can write URL in here and that's going to work. Now here we're going to write the text. So here I'm just going to write the title. Now under the link, we have our logo or the trash can. 
So let's go ahead and paste it right over there. And now we have to append this element to our URL list element. So URL list element dot append child. And that's going to be our URL EL. Now we have to run this function over here. So I'm going to scroll down here and write render URL list. And then we also have to render it at the very start. So right over here. Now let's see how that looks like. So let's update everything. And when we open it, we're going to have a bunch of extensions here because I've pressed on the button a few times and it actually added it to our local storage. So we're going to have to actually make a system that doesn't add the same URL. So if I press on this, we're going to see this extension appear. If we go to trash here, we can see that it opens up and when we press on add, we're going to have our bootstrap. But to make the input work, first thing that we're going to do is go to our add button and we're going to need to make a variable. So const URL name, and that's going to equal to URL input dot value. And I'll make an if statement, which is going to help us not having the same URLs. So we're going to check if saved URLs dot sum. And here we're going to select the title. That's what we're going to start with. And we're going to write callback function, write title equal to URL name or title equals to tabs dot title. And so this is going to be only for the title. So here we're checking if we have um, a title inside of our URL list that would equal to our URL name, which is going to be the value from our input or any titles from our URL list that would equal to the title of our actual tab. And now we have to work on the actual URL. So to do that, we're going to write saved URLs dot sum URL. So here we're going to check if URL equals to tabs. We're going to select the first one dot URL. And if all of that is true, we're just going to return, which is not going to run any of this over here. And now it should actually work. But before we make sure if it does, let's see if we have anything in our input. So we're going to make a variable const page title, which is going to be inside of our title here. So I'm going to just paste that in there. Now this is going to be eternary operator. So we're going to check if URL name length is bigger than zero. And if that's true, we're going to set the name to be URL name, else it's going to be tabs and then the actual name of our page here. And now there's actually one more thing left to do, and that's to make our trash cans work. So that's not too hard. Let's go to the very bottom and inside of our render list. And what we're going to do here is after we have rendered all of our URLs, we're going to add event listeners to the button, or in this case, it's going to be the trash can. So let's write cons delete ETNs, and that's going to equal to document query selector all. Make sure it's all because we're selecting all of them. And we're going to use the class bi trash. Next thing we're going to do is write delete buttons dot for each delete button because we have a lot of them. And this is going to be an array, so we have to write dot for each. And then once we have each of our buttons, we're going to write delete btn dot add event listener. Click here, we're going to run the callback function. And now we can select our URL list. So URL list dot splice the index and then one. Now we're going to save this to local storage. So local storage dot set item URLs and then JSON stringify. And then we also need to render our list again. So bootstrap the most so and so if we press on that, we're actually going to get an error. That's because somehow we got to actually write our index. So we have our index here, but it's not set to anything. So in here, delete buttons dot for each delete button and we actually need to get the index of our um, URL here so that we would be able to actually remove it from our URL list. So go back to our bootstrap and when we press it, we can see that it's going to get removed. There's one more thing we need to do and it's when we press our URLs here, nothing actually works. So let's go back here to our popup.js and we need to add another event listener and that's going to be to each of our URLs. So const links. That's going to be document dot query selector all. Now we're going to write links dot for each link. We're going to create an event listener. And then here we're going to write Chrome dot tabs dot create, which is going to open a new tab with the URL of e dot target dot href. Or we can just remove that. And we can use link. So that's also going to work. But instead of target, it's just going to be link dot href. 
So this right here is going to be our Chrome extension, and it's actually going to be working, and you can always tweak this a bit, add or remove stuff, and add your own touches to it, but this is where I'm going to end this video, so I really hope that you liked it, and if you did, then make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this, comment down below if you have any questions or any video suggestions, and hopefully, see you in the next video.